and try to switch it the other way. There we go. All right. <laughs> well, okay. Hi, guys. We're here. We're trying to get this figured out. We Let's had see. so much all <laughs> set up. We have a new intro song. We have multiple cameras all over the house for you guys. It was going to be and so good. nothing is working the way it's supposed to. Technology, yeah. it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it didn't help at all that the internet in the house went out three seconds before right. the stream was supposed to start. So There we go. We'll all go. right. So we've got some folks. So what I'm going to do is, oh, no, do we still have, we have, still don't have no internet. Oh, there's eight people, 11 people. Yay, they're showing okay. up. Hi. We've got great audio. Great. So I checked in over there. We're okay, great. that's so awesome. So come on around. Okay, we can't see anybody's comments unless we like come swing back I, around. I, I can see. Oh, you can. I can. I, can, I got comments. Oh, great! Hi, Gloria. Okay. Ah, all right. So we did. We had everything set up. We've got a whole like a bunch of different cameras and all sorts of things that we were gonna do, and then the internet a minute and went. Poof. And we're like, it killed the stream key. So anyway, so uh, we couldn't set it up the way we wanted to. Dang it. Well, hi, everybody. So anyway, welcome to Sunday in the studio. Uh, <laughs> we are actually in the living room right now, which is the new filming studio. Why are we filming uh, in the studio right now? What are you uh, what are you filming? Well, we, we set up a filming studio in the living room because the I just finally started the Elemental Coat Workshop, which is super exciting. So that I released the pattern about a year ago and it's been sort of just slowly going along which has been great and um, not even that slowly where's well, the copy of the pattern where's the copy I, of the pattern I don't, I don't know we moved it okay it's got to be in there somewhere you, i think it just got moved off to the side there's okay. a whole pile of them right over there um, oh yeah yeah because <laughs> we've That's been boxing them idea. up and getting ready because doing the classes totally made themselves so anyway I've done this class a few times at um, Casey Maker, and I feel like I taught it somewhere else, but I did like three or four at Casey Maker, and it's been really good. And so I finally decided it is time, we've been here, we kind of got settled, that I really need to like kick off this class before fall. So we kicked it off a few days ago, and now we are making all the videos for the class, and I've been working on the worksheets for the class, and all sorts of stuff. So I'm pretty excited about it. It has, um, been really fun and I've really missed teaching so I'm looking forward to doing that so anyway we are kicking it off it's the elemental coat workshop did you put up the link by chance uh, I haven't I haven't yet let's do that it's 50 bucks for the class you have to buy the pattern separately but the class involves a live to kick it off on August 10th and then we will have a live every month on the first Sunday of the month so sort of how we have the make in the studio then we will also after that I will have a coat class um, live every week, every month, every month, so that you can actually, you know, kind of get questions answered and show what you're working on and all that good stuff. What were you going to say? Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Susan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're so excited to have you guys here, so thanks. Um, yeah, so anyway, that kicks off, off August 10th, and like I said, it'll kind of just go forever. The classes, that's a thing that people ask a lot, is how long can they access the class? I haven't set any time limit to it, so as long as you want to or as long as the coat is the coat class is selling I'll keep it up there um, and you'll have access to it and access to all of the updates and all of that good stuff so um, it should work out very well and then with the added lives I think it'll be really nice so we'll do those um, through zoom Hi, so you can ask questions and you know show off to everybody like you know what we're doing what we're working on I think it'll be really good so I'm very much looking forward to it and we are definitely learning a lot um, more and getting back into the saddle with videos because it's been a little bit. We haven't done them. And then, um, you know, we're over at Biani now and we don't actually do the video stuff. So we do behind the scenes. Like last week I did the um, teleprompter thing and right. you've done that and you've worked with the cameras, but we haven't done the whole As of all of this like we did before. <laughs> there will not be a sort of a, a live Sew Together Tuesday style show for by any. I don't think that's probably in the cards. It's okay. That's why we're here. Yeah. We, we're <laughs> going to do this. It's, this is, like this is how this is how we get to connect with you yeah. guys now. So here yeah. we go. 
Um, hi, like Bobby. Hi, Karen. Oh, gosh, a ton of brand ambassadors. Ah, there's a couple ambassadors. ambassadors Thank here. you. Um, Yay. It's, it's so it's good great. to see you guys again. I'm really happy. So anyway, we have a few things that we want to share with you. It's not going to go quite as smoothly as we were hoping, but let's do it. So we can't we can't share the pictures like we were going to. Darn it. So nope. we have some pictures uh, um, of Bryce. So we did go to Bryce. What's last... going on at GE Designs? Oh, let's that's that. the other thing. Here's another so this, link this in the comment. This goes with the code. So the coat class I'm doing online, but if you would like to take it in person, I'm teaching it for a Casey Maker retreat again, but that one's sold out, but there is a class coming up. There's two classes actually at GE Designs up in Minnesota. And we are doing two classes there on September 14th and 15th, I believe. I will be there on the day before to do um, demos for By Annie. So I will be up there kind of double dipping and teaching people how to do the By Annie patterns and teach people how to make the coat. So when it's two days of coat classes, those are single day classes. So it's a workshop that lasts all day on Sunday, I believe, and all day on Monday. So those are two different classes, so you get to pick a day. I know a few people have already let me know that they are coming and that I'll get to see them again, which is fabulous. I will say that meeting so many people on the road when we did the road tour a couple years ago was so wonderful. And then at the same time, it was so hard because we don't get to see those people very often. So I know some are coming up to GE Designs and going to that class with me, and I'm really looking forward to it. So um, what else did we want to tell them? Um, gosh, let's look at do the we list, wanna, right? Do we want to no, do the little sewing demo? Oh, oh, because we did have a few things that I want to show you. So, and if you have questions, please pop them up there. I'm really, we're happy to catch up. It's been a little bit of craziness for a while. Um, so in the pattern, I talk about sewing your pattern pieces together because this is what I have always done. Is everything okay with that? Everything's that? great. Okay, good. Um, so I've not always sewn my PDF patterns together, but I have for a long time sewn my PDF patterns together because it is just easier. I hate the trimming and taping and trimming and taping and trying to glue and blah, blah, blah. It's just a pain and I've never lived someplace that having a projector would be easy. So I haven't done that either. And I don't really like the idea of having to kind of leave everything there so that I can cut things out with the projector. They are people's thing and I love them for that. It is not my thing. So I have sewn PDFs together. Well, I think about two weeks ago, I posted a Instagram reel because I was working actually on the pattern for this dress, which was a PDF pattern, and I sewed it together. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna record this and I'm gonna make a little reel out of it and share it. So I did, and it's now over 110,000 likes, <laughs> which is insane. And a lot of people saying, well, you can't do that. And I say, oh, I already did it lots of times. So, um, so I wanted to kind of demo that for you guys today so that if you hate sewing PDF patterns, this is the way to do it. The coat pattern is PDF. Well, it's also print, but for people who are especially living abroad, they buy the PDF. And I feel bad because I hate PDF patterns, but, oh, these. Show them some of those pieces. So these are. Tell them what they've won. <laughs> so <laughs> this is how it prints out. And this is just a portion of them. But you end up having all of these pages that you print. I think it's 35 pages that you have to print. So seven rows of five pages each, I think. Um, it ends up being a lot. So. Yeah, so I wanted to show you that. So I brought my little featherweight out, and we're going to move things around. So we're going to do this the old STT way. Old STT way. Let's All do right. it. So I'm going to thread go. up my machine because um, I brought, like I said, I brought my little featherweight. I'm going to move this computer so we can get in here and see it. I didn't even check to see if it was um, going right. Okay. It's so pretty. It's so cute. I really love this little machine. I did have to search for it because I got hidden in a closet. Oops. Okay, if you think trying to thread a regular machine is hard, this is even harder because it's like on the side. Sorry, I have to look at. And I can't see the hole at all. Hello, can you see it? Oh, I, okay, you're going to have to move the camera to the other side because <laughs> I have to get my head there. Thank you. There we go. See? Just, just, I just needed my to camera <laughs> in the way again. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> Typical. Okay, so there we go. So now I've got my thread all pulled up. 
So the trick is with this, so on mine especially, they have, I did a darker one on one side and a lighter one on the other, and you just have to put the what darker you, a, one a on one top. what? Sorry, this sorry. line. Show me. So you see the light line and the dark line? Uh, I don't this see right a ton here. of difference. I do see a little bit of difference in line weight, yes. Okay, so this is a light one, this is the dark one. Okay. So this one you can see through the back a lot better, which you can sort of see there. Okay. okay. So I just stick these guys together. Stick it in my machine and sew it. Okay, so I want to make sure that my stitches are kind of big. Um, on the featherweight, these are stitches per inch. You can't really see those numbers there very well, but it goes, I think it's down to like eight here. It goes up to like 24. So depending on what you want. We want a bigger stitch so that it doesn't uh, tear. Okay, so we're just gonna sew it. I just try to make sure that my edges are even, okay? Let's see if it's going, yep, good. I'm just gonna keep that line right there. If you can't see the line very well, one of the things, oops, my thread broke. Um, um, one of the things that I have uh, done is just trace that line. I don't know why my thread broke got caught underneath there earlier, so I thought that might be it, but it's not. So then, let me just go ahead and press it over. Yeah, yeah, finger press that paper. And there you go, <laughs> okay? Great. So okay. then it's stuck. So, so the thing people always ask is, yeah. does it tear? And only does it fall apart? That's actually, <laughs> that's pretty hard, actually. <laughs> and it's, it's like stretched the seam, you can see that. Just the tiniest bit. Got it. But it's actually really strong. So the only thing that I will ever do sometimes is like then when you have to come around here and you cut out your size, sometimes I'll put just a little slip of um, scotch tape on there to hold it um, still because you have cut the, the thread really short. The thing is that up here I have a long tail so it's not gonna pull out. But if I had clipped the thread really short, it's more likely to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, you, yeah, you're not back stitching or anything crazy like that because no. that would put a lot of holes in your paper. It would put a lot more holes in there. I'm going to cut it right here. Are, are, those, are those Hawks paper scissors? No. They're good scissors. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so here I've cut it. And so you can see uh, the thread or the, yeah, the stitching comes right up here and then it's cut just right there. So it's more likely to come out. But still isn't. Yeah, if I, Yeah. So the concern about whether or not poking that many holes in paper was going to cause it to perforate enough to rip is um, it debunked. Isn't. And so usually <laughs> I do it at like a three, but you can see if you look at this stitching, can you see that close, Hawk? You can see that that's not, it's probably like a two and a half. I normally do it at a three on my machine that I can tell millimeters. This one, it's about the way it works. Okay, so. We were talking about this and the crazy um, response that video has had, which has just been nuts, um, but makes me really happy. And thanks for letting me do a, a tear test there to see how it worked. Because um, I never have had it tear on me. It's always worked out just fine. But everybody was just like, won't it tear, won't it tear? And I was like, no. So we thought we'll test it with you guys and see what happens. Um, and it totally is fine. But then we started talking about that and I remembered a video that I had watched. So recently we've watched all of the Biani Basics. And if you don't know about the Biani Basics and you have any interest in sewing Biani bags, I'm gonna tell you, you need to go watch them and you need to do each of the projects. So they are four patterns that are available for free. You get the patterns and all of what they call add-on videos that walk you through the different steps of making these projects. And they'll teach you all of the things about how to work with vinyl, how to work with mesh, how to round the corners, how to sew the binding. All of these different things are going to be taught in those little classes. And like I said, those are free. So being new to my Annie, I have sewn bags before, but I never did watch these videos. And as an employee, they were like, you have to watch these videos. So I said, okay, okay. I watch them. So I've watched them and I have learned a ton. And one of the things that I just recently learned was she was talking about the labels. So this is really for people who know about by Annie bags. What happened to my labels now? They were just right here. 
Okay, here they are. All right. These little guys. So when you get the pattern, you will get a, oh, I should have grabbed that. When you get the patterns, you'll get a little card in there that's for a free add-on video, okay? And on that, it has a code that you can use on the website. You have to sign in, then you use the code, and you can get free add-on videos for each of those patterns. I highly recommend it. The other thing that that does is it gives you access to extra sheets of the labels, which I didn't know about until Hawk told me today that I was like, what, there's extra labels? Because I was like, oh, you have to copy that page out of the pattern before you cut it up. He said, no, no, no. There's a whole extra PDF you can download online. And some of them, depending on which the project is, it even has um, uh, a cut sheet. Right. Uh, so like a, a really nice layout of like how you would want to cut those pieces, especially yeah. after they've been quilted. Right. right? So. And there is a ton of information in those add-on videos. And so a lot of people don't know about them. I knew that they existed, but I never had watched them before because I was like, I know how to sew. Um, <laughs> Which you I, do. I do know how to and sew. And surprisingly, <laughs> you can still learn stuff. <laughs> I can still learn stuff, and I have. So the thing that I wanted to tell you about this, how it all circles back together is that in the video, she recommends using a perforated, perforating rotary cutter blade. So it would cut holes in it. I assume, and I didn't look it up, but I should have, I assume this is a paper crafting um, blade, like that you would use for scrapbooking, that sort of thing, because it'll make it tear easily. I can't imagine in sewing really many places we would want it to do that. But what I realized is I could make tiny stitches in my paper with my sewing machine and it would tear. So we're gonna get to take the same idea that we use with sewing the PDF pattern together, but use it for making the paper tear. So you don't have to move the, you don't have to move it, you could just spin it around okay. and make it look toward me. So my thread broke, which is perfect because I wanted to unthread it. So I did, and then I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna sew these along the lines and it will actually just perforate my paper and we're gonna see how it works because I haven't done it yet. Um, so I'm going to make it so it has a lot more holes in the paper. So I'm going to do it at 20-ish. Guess what I can do since we went live straight to Facebook instead of through StreamYard. You can zoom. I can zoom. Look at you go. Oh, sorry guys. There you go. What happened? Oh, I moved fast. Oh, got it. <laughs> Don't make anybody sick to their stomachs. So I will say that one thing that I realized when I was trying earlier, could I, could I do this on my other machine? I can't because it will beep at me because I have no thread in the top. So every 20 stitches or so, it tells me, check your upper thread. And I'm like, I don't want to check my upper thread, but thank you. Um, so my new fancy machine doesn't do it quite as well, which is why I'm like, I'm just going to pull out the featherweight and we'll give it a shot there. This is pretty cool. I think it's going to work. I'm excited to see the difference in the tear test now. I have to backstitch just one. It's pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I did try to use, um, oh, now I don't know what they're called, but the little tool that you use that has the, it's like a, it's like a rotary cutter, but tiny, and it just has little points on it. I'd call that it you a, pounce, use. a pounce wheel. Right. But, um, that's, not, that, that's, that's more of an art term, I think, right. a sewing term. And it, yeah, it's used for transferring with chalk. So, I mean, it is kind of the same thing. And uh, I tried to use that, but it didn't pierce it close enough because that is used to actually trace a pattern, not make holes that you could cut. So there's that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a couple of them in between. And we'll see how this tears, okay? Thanks for coming along on my little, let's try. <laughs> I kind of like these. <laughs> I did a little goof there. And I think this is kind of more fun than uh, making a copy and cutting it out. So what she suggested is that if you do this, oops, if you do this, you can actually not tear all your pieces apart at one time. You could just cut out the big piece and then tear out the pieces that you need. So as you're working through your soft and stable or your lining fabric, you're just going to tear out the ones that you need for that, which makes a lot of sense. Okay. Are we ready to try? Absolutely. Is anybody freaking out about it yet? Uh, no, I'm not really able to see comments over here on my Got phone it. for whatever reason. So I will say one thing. That's okay. 
Um, you can come back around in a second. I will. All right. Hey, Randy. I see Randy. Hi, Randy. Um, okay. So we'll move this back around so you guys can see this. I'll see if I can there get it so it's kind go. of close. So you can see I just sewed through it with tiny stitches. Okay, I'm zooming in. Oh, okay. yeah. Yep, that looks like the micro perforations on a check or something. Yeah, it's perfect. Let me see if I can if I can see. It's right at the 20 mark on my featherweight. So if you have a featherweight, it's, so it's 20 stitches per inch is what that is. Beyond what any normal human hand could do. But the machine can do it. And it really, like, yeah, it totally did perforate it. All right. So I'm going to call this a great idea. So let's see. If I do this, because I tore it, I did it down the whole side. Look at how well that does. That's great. That is amazing. So you now that's two new uses for a sewing machine in one day. Right, exactly. <laughs> and I so I'll tell you one of the other <laughs> one of the other um, like complaints that I got about sewing PDF patterns was that it was going to make a mess. And um, for anybody, probably most of you who know that for the last eight years I've taught how to work with cuddle fabrics. The idea that paper was going to be messy was quite laughable <laughs> because it, yeah, it doesn't hold hold water, it doesn't hold, doesn't stand a chance next to cuddle fabrics, okay, in the mess making arena. So it's totally fine. The other thing is, won't it dull your needles? And sewing fabric dulls your needles. Sewing paper will dull your needles too. Yeah, so just you, make yeah, sure to change your needles. Paper, scissors, maybe you use an old needle to do this part. Yeah, easy, so if you have easy peasy. A, yeah, if you have a needle that has a burr in it or something, this would be a perfect thing for it. But also, needles are fairly cheap and I will use it for eight hours and then change. So I do change my needles pretty frequently because I have noticed it sews so much better without them. Um, so anyway, there we go. But look at this, so you could, so the idea is, and I like this idea a lot, is that I could tear out, so here is fusible interfacing. So if I was cutting my interfacing, oh, I didn't, no, I did, no, I didn't. There we go. I just sewed just a little bit of it. I could go ahead and do this. and I can have these available. And now I have coordinating fabric. I'm gonna tear these out. And then I have this little chunk of them. So then when I'm doing my, when I get to this part, I have them all together and I can just tear them off one at a time and put them on there. I right. think it's a winning idea. I think and it's so, pretty great. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> I think this is the fun thing about... We, we, took it, we took it all the way there. Yeah, I think it's really fun, though, to figure out these new ways that you're like, oh, that works really well. So I didn't use the perforating rotary cutter. I did use my sewing machine just at a very small... So if you did like a one millimeter stitch, it would probably work just as well. But this is a great idea. And then don't forget those add-on videos and that you can get all of these in there. So the add-on videos are technically $5 if you have the pattern and you have a newer version of the pattern, it will have that coupon code. And newer version is really last like eight years or something. Yeah. Um, you know, unless they've redone them. So, and then if they've redone them, there's a 2.0 now, you should buy that too. Okay, so that was the demo that I wanted to show you guys because I thought it was really good. We wanted to, oh, we also wanted to talk about, look at my bags. So I'm learning how to do this. So this is the take a stand bag, which I'm teaching at Casey Maker. I will say the thing that I have done on every take a stand bag now is that I've put the zipper on backwards. So this end should actually be over here and it should be flipped. So in my mind, the zipper should be on this side, but in the pattern, the hey zipper guys, should be on this side. We're going handheld again. Sorry, what was that? We're going handheld again. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I'm gonna come look at my stitches. Zooming back out a little bit. So what's, what's kind of fun is that Hawk did the quilting on this one. So this one is actually quilted and he quilted a bunch of the, uh, what is this, Gasly's fabric from Alexander Henry. Right. So I have a whole bunch of it that I've collected and then when they announced that they were closing and not doing fabric anymore, I decided I should probably just sew with this stuff. So, so he uh, Paul, it for uh, me. Let's talk about uh, long arming with soft and stable. Mm -hmm. It is yummy. Yeah. I, I like it. I, it's so it's literally so much more stable than <laughs> than than long arming on batting. Obviously, you can't do everything with soft and stable, but this was a dreamy dreamy yeah. project. 
Uh, and I mean, yeah, and I'm excited to, to get the long arm some more with and, the soft and stable sandwiches. And super fast. Like, I think that you had quilted it all within, I don't know, an hour or something like that. Like, he was like, boop, 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 done. And I had him do three one-yard chunks of fabric, quilt those up, and then I'd use them to make a bunch of different bags. So I think I've made, I don't know, six or seven bags now. So, and then this one I did with some bark cloth that I'd gotten a while ago and didn't know what to do with it, and I made the big one. So... It's really cute. You're coming along. What, what's going on yeah. with that guy in the back? So this is the one that is from those, um, the by Andy basic patterns that I was saying. So this is one of them that is available in there for this little, like, kind of like a dot bag, but not really. Um, you could use it for all sorts of things. It has a handle on both ends and it is um, bound inside. So it's, you learn how to do the binding. You learn how to do this fancy little covering of the seam here how to put in zippers, which I'm really happy with my zippers. They're looking great. Um, yeah, and so every little bit, she talks you through how to do it and why you want to do it one way or another. And um, So tell me about that fabric, though, that you found so, in your stash. So, yeah, so this fabric, just, I happened to buy it. How many uh, years ago? I think in 2017, when I came out here to teach for Dane's Cotton Shops, I think they were called, and there was a couple of different locations that they had in Sandy and Murray and Provo. And I taught in the Sandy location, I think, and the Provo location a few times. I really loved them. They were great. And when I was here, I got to go to a shop that was, they have a whole bunch of Riley Blake, and I can't remember what that other shop was called. Anyway, I bought this there way back then, and I was like trying to collect fabric along the way because I was like, oh, I'll make a quilt from all my travels. Well, then I didn't realize I would be traveling for eight years. And so I have a lot of, I have a lot of fabric. So I found this in the uh, stash because this project takes three fat quarters. So I had to dig through my fat quarters, and I kind of love novelty fabrics. And this one was in there, and I opened it up. It was camping is the part that I saw. This part is what I saw sitting in my stash. And I was like, oh, camping, that'll be really cute. I love camping. So I pulled it out, and then I opened it, and it had the welcome to Utah. And I was like, <laughs> all right, well, that's what we're doing, and we're going to try some fussy cutting. So that was my first uh, little venture into that. So this is the Easy Does It bag. Riley Blake fabric. They have uh, done Utah fabric, I think, a few times. But um, this was one from Super a long time cute. ago. And it just, it was so apropos and kind of serendipitous that I would find it, you know, a couple months after I moved here. So welcome to Utah for me. Um, and you, Hawk. We're both here now. So um, we had a whole camera set up for showing off Hawk's paintings. Did you want to try to move in there? Yeah, we can roll in there, but you're going to be the camera operator now. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to have to come around and grab the okay. camera. Okay. So I'll just hand it to you. And then we're, okay. gonna, I, we're going to stroll through the about, house. I was just and... about to put it on the, the tripod again. So everybody's... But I don't think we need to. We don't need to. Everybody's wiggling around with me. Sorry, Sorry guys. Everybody. All okay. right. There okay. you go. And we're just going to walk out. Hey, look, it's a light. It's a light. Okay. So we're going to walk out. Look. Here are all my books. All my sewing books have to be in here because I don't have enough room. Okay, so I'm coming in ahead of you. Come walk this way. <laughs> all right, so I had planned on hanging out with you guys a little bit and working on a painting. I am not nearly as prepared as I want to be, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, so this is a photograph I took of Zion the first time through. Well, I guess the second time through. The first time since we moved here to Utah. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, this is not the most exciting picture of Zion by any stretch of the imagination. Well, to be honest, we haven't gotten off the main road because it's always so busy. Right. That's so actually So this is totally just a picture true. from the main road, which is gorgeous and very Dr. Seussian in my opinion. So it is really, it is lovely, but not the ideal picture. But it's where you started. Right? Are you pulling up the live? I was thinking about trying to pull up the live. Okay. So I just have you to click on, to there you go. Sure. Click on that. <laughs> so we could see some comments in here. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. So I'm going to give you just a teaser of what he's working on there. So his inspiration picture and, uh, and what he's working on there. There we go. I see comments. All right. Hi, everybody. All right. Okay. Um, so... The painting isn't exactly like the isn't exactly like the photograph, and that's uh, I, artistic license is a real thing. Um, and mostly, what I'm looking for, 
I've certainly gotten better at my photography and framing up my photographs, but I'm always interested in telling, trying to tell a little bit more of a story. So in this case, there's this, this really nice sort of valley and crease back through here and then the drop off. So I like this crease and that was going to sort of be my focal point and like the vanishing point goes right back in there. So that's the furthest part away uh, on this painting. So I definitely have sort of darkened this area in here in the painting. And I'm kind of what I'm going to kind of work those levels back and forth a little bit. So let's um, see this. I thought well, maybe kind of work on some of these trees in the foreground. It's not, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. I've still got all these things to set up. So, oh look, say hello to my rubber chicken because I wouldn't be me without a rubber chicken. Truth. <sighs> I'm not sure why she puts up with me, but she does. Um, so you did change the trees a little bit, I noticed. Yeah, and I'm definitely, it's pretty loose, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, in, co in comparison to maybe some of the other stuff that I've painted, um, I have a tendency to sort of migrate towards being really, really detailed. So mm -hmm. trying to become more painterly, like I'm always sort of against myself about leaving these brush strokes in. Like I love brush strokes like these in other people's paintings. And <laughs> then as soon as I'm done with them, I want to just soften everything out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, no, leave it, leave it there. It'll be okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's see. Let's just mix up a little bit of a green on uh, the palette. Let's see if I can find a little something. You want to come down here and look at the palette? Yeah, Sheila asked if you were painting oils, and yes, it that is. is I am. Uh, it is oils. I am painting in oils. So I'm gonna do sort of a highlight layer on some of these trees in the foreground a little bit. Let's see if I can get a little bit more blue under that. These, these, these have been sitting here for a minute, so they've got a little skin on them. There we go. And I also want it to not be quite so loud. So one of the things that you guys know about, you might know about color theory, is uh, that uh, if you like a color but it needs to be a little bit more muted you can add the opposite so in this case I'm going to add sort of a warm or a little bit of a warm orangey yellow to this and that is going to take it a little more towards gray it's going to reduce what they call the chroma the brighter something is the brighter a color is the higher its chroma the more it moves towards gray or a dull version of itself, the lower its chroma. So that seems like I just mixed up a bunch of stuff. I'm making mud, green, green mud. And now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. There we go. Yeah, that one will work. And I oftentimes do use a little bit of um, a medium, uh, Liquin Original is kind of the medium that I use to kind of thin some of these. It's not really thinning the paint out, but it definitely changes the drying time a little bit, but I didn't do it this time. It'll be okay. So, old, old brushes are great for painting natural shapes. And try not to throw my brushes away. So why is your brush so crooked? Well, it is. It just happened to be the size of the bristles that I wanted. I don't necessarily care right now about this detail brush, mm -hmm. but this detail brush came crooked, and it's actually kind of great because it gets my hand out of the way of mm -hmm. what I'm painting, so I can see a little better. Got it. In this case, it was sort of a good accidental grab. So it's interesting because that is what brings the light, right? Yeah. Because so that's what it seems like now. Now I can see the sunshine on it. Yeah, and it, it, I'll definitely do another pass on this too where it gets even more yellow. Um, so that's the other interesting thing about painting landscapes and thinking about light is that this might be a little technical, but we'll figure it out. So yellow light doesn't transmit through the atmosphere 
as much as blue light. So that's one of the reasons why the sky is blue, but also if you look all the way back in the back in, uh, in the layers, you mm -hmm. oftentimes see the background mountains, for example, they start to go purple. Mm -hmm. It's because the yellow light didn't get it all the way to your eyes because oh, the atmosphere filtered some of that out. Mm -hmm. So you oftentimes see your brightest yellows in the foreground and your and nice soft diffused purples all the way in the background. We call it atmospheric perspective. All of this color theory in my world applies to uh, obviously the painting, but also applies to thinking about my and my quilting adventure as well. I'm gonna when we get to when we get more into me long arming, we'll get some long arming time in on the camera. Long arm is set up over at the studio over at Biani right now mm -hmm. because we don't have room for it here no. at the house. Um, no kidding. But when you, when we start to talk about picking fabrics and thinking about color theory we're going to have those conversations together and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So anyway, I think um, so too. We have a special guest. Oh, right now. What's um, happening? Who happens to maybe have a thing to celebrate today? Oh, is my mom in the is my mo Hi mom. Happy birthday. <laughs> I'm glad to see you here. That's awesome. Thanks for letting me know, Teresa. You bet. I appreciate that. Happy I, I'll, birthday. I'll give you a call in a little while. Yeah. You know, I haven't done it yet. Everybody tell Hawk's mom happy birthday. That would be Miss Shauna McKee in the in the comments. That's right. I was glad to see your pop up. Nice, nice, nice. All right. So I could do this for literally, and will do this for literally hours. <laughs> um, it's totally true. So thanks for coming on the, the, the ride with us. Uh, hopefully next time we get our stream yard working right, you guys can see the fun intro that we built and we'll get some extra cameras mm -hmm. in the game. And uh, you know, whatever, you'll come along for this ride with us too as we get our technology figured out. I exactly. Think, I, I, I think that next, next month, we will probably not rely on the internet here in St. George, and I will get the Starlink satellite hooked up, and we'll probably try to run the stream that way. Yeah, might be See what how we that do. goes. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? Um, I think. Do we have more questions? That might let's be it. Go that. look through the comments and see. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to show you some of his other paintings that are down oh, here. Oh, take them on a tour. I know. Okay, so here's some of his other ones, including his little whimsy character. And if you follow along with us on the road, I'm going to see if I can go out here and find his painting. Where is it? Some of our little art, my big school map that I absolutely love. Oh, here's one that he did. So we have a few of them hanging around. This is one that he did, I believe, from St. Paris. Yes, so that was one that we had chased down a storm in St. Paris, and it came over which is where he grew up, and uh, the storm came over the the pond or pond. It's a small, it's a small lake, and uh, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I really, I love this painting. Those rocks are just phenomenal. Little lily pads. While we're on the road, and uh, yeah, let's right. talk. About, let's talk about that. You want to take him out, out back oh, out there? Oh, sure. That sounds great. Okay. Here's Whoa. our kitchen. Here's my <laughs> my quilt. This is a Lisa Condon <laughs> thing from uh, Sam Hunter. Okay, now we're going to go through the laundry room. Sorry, guys. Hiding the view. <laughs> we're going to take you on a moment of zen and see if this works. So one of the great things about this place uh, that we're renting in St. George is that it has a beautiful backyard and so we wanted to show you little the little koi pond, pond that's back here. Hi guys. Because these fish love hawk. They do. And it is really quite lovely. So the move out here has been um, really kind of wonderful in some ways that have brought us a little a little peace. And part of it is these fish out here that hawk hangs out with every day. 
I fed them this morning, so they they should know better. But you know, whatever. They just want to say hi. They do. They come right up when they hear my voice. I'm pretty pretty pleased with them. Anyway, there's about 50 goldfish and and some bigger koi in here too. So, uh, yeah. It's 108 really right now. It may not look like it's 108, but it's 108. Uh, yeah. But this has got a Weirdly, nice, we're acclimating. Yeah. It's got a nice circulation system, and it keeps them nice and cool in the shade, so they seem to be pretty happy. Yeah. Anyway, and me, I'm happy too. All right, I'm going to see if I can switch this camera around again. And nope. There we go. more of them that we weren't able to uh, get while we were live. Thank you for your patience. We'll be back again the beginning of what month? August. August. Oh, I can't even keep track. Um, it'll be August 11th, I believe, and we will do it at the same time um, that Sunday, and then we'll probably have a little bit of a new schedule coming up with the new uh, Elemental Coke class coming and starting on the 10th. So anyway, we can't wait to see you then. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And until then, happy sewing. Happy sewing. <laughs> Happy, Happy making. making. <laughs> Bye, you guys.